Okay, for this chapter, let's start with something um, fairly easy. I want to um, try um, just to do some equilibrium problems in circuits, okay? So I'm going to start with two capacitors, um, and those two capacitors um, I'm going to have in series when they're connected. But when they're not connected, one of those capacitors will be... Um, connected to a battery and, the, and charging, whereas the other one will be connected to a um, sink, to, a, to the ground, and will discharge. So we're going to have two capacitors, and so each capacitor has a rating, right? And um, a battery. And um, we'll just give it a voltage now. We're going to worry about EMF soon, but right now let's just call it a voltage V, okay? Um, and we're going to want to represent that, as I just said, when the two are connected, um, they're connected uh, in series when not, one is charging with a battery and one is um, not, one is connected to ground. So let's start with a battery, all right? Uh, nice simple battery here that we're calling V, right? And um, he will come around here and he'll connect to a capacitor over here that we'll call C2. And over in the middle here somewhere we'll have another capacitor we'll call C1, right? And then the battery will come here and C1 will be the one that's connected to um, the battery when the switch is this way and when over here we'll have C2 and when the switch is the same way um, it'll be connected to ground one two three okay so there's our ground um, and when it's not these two guys will be connected in series, just like that. So that's sort of a circuit diagram. That would be the representation. Um, and it's the reason, reason why it's our representation is because it's encompassing everything, right? Not just what we're going to do, not just what we're going to use in the problem, okay? So we're going to have to use the drawing and the representation and the setup a little bit differently when we're dealing with these circuit problems than when we were using when we were doing the field problems. Um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I just one of the reasons for doing this particular video is to make sure that you understand what I expect from these kinds of problems when you turn them in. All right. So we're given two capacitors, C1, C2, and some battery with a voltage V here, um, and we've got these two um, situations. What we're going to want to find here is the um, charge, the final charge. If we've let C1 completely, C1 completely charge, and um, C2 dis completely discharge, and then switch these two connected switches um, onto uh, to connect both of these um, capacitors, what will the um, what will the final equilibrium charges be? Okay, so this is sort of an introduction to the sort of things we're going to do. Now, um, you're going to do a lot of things with transients, right? Um, and you're going to do a lot of things with um, with other sort of uh, time dependencies. You're going to need resistors and things like that to actually work those sorts of problems. Um, but right now, I, w I just want to look at um, these these sort of uh, equilibrium problems, because you're going to have to solve the equilibrium problem before you solve the transient problem, all right? So you'll solve the equilibrium problem to get you the get yourself the equilibrium conditions, or the initial conditions, excuse me, uh, for the transient problem, and possibly the final conditions as well. Uh, they might also be important in the problem. They might also just fall out. Depends on the problem, depends on how you actually work it. Um, so we've got this thing going on. Um, so we, in our setup, we need two setups. The first setup 
is going to be with the capacitor 1 in series with a battery, with cap 1 in series with a battery. All right, and a drawing for that is just what it sounds like, right? Got our battery, V, and he's in series with capacitor 1, C1, right? Um, I could do the same thing for this ground, but that's not a really fun thing to draw. You just have um, right, a capacitor C2 and the ground, and anything that's out over there doesn't really matter very much. Could, but doesn't. Um, so we have, uh, I guess I've already done it, so I may as well say cap 2 in series with ground. All right, and three, uh, what we're going to want is, do, yeah, I do have room, excellent. Uh, our capacitors, C2 and C1 in series. All right. Okay, and this is what we're going to use for most of the problem for all the complicated, interesting parts rather than uh, let's just throw an equation at things. There's not a lot to this. It's almost throwing equations at things, but um, we don't like to throw equations at things. Um, stuff in physics. Physics is all about what we do to get the equations, and then we just have to be confident with our mathematics after that. Um, so our strategy is first to find the initial charges on the capacitors. Right? We just need to figure out what those are. Um, then uh, find an equation. Well, we find that equation for um, for the last. Uh, what would that be? The last um, circuit. And we'll use a Kirchhoff's law to do that. Um, and then we'll need to find the um, charge condition. So charge is going to be conserved, so we'll get a condition out of that. And um, finally, in four, we'll just solve everything and be completely happy, right? Because that's what, that is exactly what physics problems are intended to do, is make you happy and make you always happy. That's what physics problems are for. So let's go ahead and be happy. So we'll need to do our answer stuff. All right, so in this case, we're um, completely familiar from last semester with uh, what happens when we charge a capacitor. Q is equal to the capacitor, and it's rating times the voltage rating of the battery V. This is, this is our starting condition, ST. We have another starting condition, uh, we'll call that zero. On um, this capacitor two, like I said, we discharge it so it's nothing. Uh, nice and simple. So now we need a um, now we need to do our Kirchhoff's law. So when we go around here, we have to add up all of these um, all of these changes in voltage around a loop. Um, so we have delta V one plus delta V two. So if delta V1, we have positive and negative here, we have positive and negative here. So if this is positive, right? So in that case, we have Q1 over C1, right? So to find delta V, we divide by C. Um, and then because these are negative, um, or these are opposite orientations, from minus to plus, from plus to minus, um, we have a minus sign of Q2 over C2. And because it's Kirchhoff's law, we get all that equal to zero. All right, that has an implication. Um, that implication means that uh, Q2 is equal to um, C2 over C1 times Q1, right? The more capacitance you have, the more, the more, um, the more charge you're going to end up having um, when you divvy it up. Right, so we're going to divvy it up between these two different plates. Um, 
Let's see, is there anything in else interesting? Oh, we have one more charge condition, right? Once we've charged this up, and then, so we've charged this guy up here, right? And then we switch this over. All of the charge is going to be on here, and, you know, we have conservation of charge. So we can't lose any charge. So the total charge of these two um, capacitors, Q1 plus Q2, that's going to equal QST. So the final, the sum of the final charges is going to equal the sum of the initial charges, and um, C2 is initially not charged. Sounds pretty good to me. Does it sound good to you? I know it sounds good to you. All right. So, so here we are. We've got these two conditions, and now we just have to use them to, to solve for two unknowns. This is algebra. This is algebra you're used to. This is algebra you love. So, um, let's see. Well, we've got Q2 is equal to a bunch of stuff times Q1. So it seems to me like a substitution is a good idea in here. That'll be probably the quickest way. So we have Q1 plus um, C2 over C1 times Q1, which is all equal to uh, uh, C1 plus C2 over C1 times Q1 is equal to QST. Well, that tells us immediately that um, what Q1 is, right? So Q1 is equal to C1 times QST over um, C1 plus C2. QST is not one of the things we're given, right? We don't really know what the charges are. Uh, we know what the voltages are and what the capacitances are. So we have to go all the way up here, right? and find that QST is equal to C1 times V, right? So um, Q1 is equal to uh, C1 squared times the voltage over C1 plus C2. Which seems completely reasonable to me. And um, to get Q2, we just have to swap out one of these C1s for a C2. So uh, probably the best idea is to move this up a little bit. So Q2 is equal to C1 times C2 times V over C1 plus C2. And so we are done. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, and that's the sort of thing that you're expected to do on your homework. You'll also look at some transients. I'll talk more about transients in a later video. Um, I'll see you in class and have a great, great night.